not just Accra. And so on Konaya, as in 1939, there was a major earthquake that affected very gravely this area that we call Jamestown. Already the buildings were weak, being of much inferior quality. The buildings were all screamed together and it had a huge impact. The two positive things that came out of it was it forced the government to come up with building regulations that if you want to build a house, you need a permit. And if you go to get a permit, these are the rules and conditions under which you would build. How high it should be, how far from the streets, rest of all that. It also insisted on the use of concrete, concrete blocks and concrete. That was a better, well, that was you know, yeah. than the mud brick that we had been using up to now. And presumably would save a lot of lives, which it has done, okay? So a lot of what sees Manprobi are the result of that particular incident. The government also took advantage of natural calamities. Uh, as populations moved into Accra, there was a need for mass housing. The idea that government should be responsible for housing the population was not the number one priority. Fact is, even in England, mass housing for the population by the government came in really after the war. We've talked a lot about the materials and the design. But then there are certain groups of people who came and left an imprint. For example, a lot of what we now call modern architecture, the straight lines, the inbuilt glass, the louvers, the international style, came in after the Second World War. And this was pioneered by young European architects who came to this country looking for a chance. And because there were very few local architects, they were given this opportunity and they brought many of these ideas with them. They functioned very much at KNUSD. If you go to KNUSD now, it used to be, I don't know about now, almost like a, a laboratory of contemporary design because of these Eastern Europeans, Yugoslavs, Hungarians, who came and were given projects by Nkrumah, who at that time actually asked the Russians to help him to establish a socialist paradise here in West Africa. So they came. So if you see that it was not due to the British, it was due more to the Eastern Europeans, okay? The last major project done by the British was Legon, which was a very much a postmodernist type of architecture, in that it used some of the vocabulary of modernist architecture, but then added details, which is very post. And, and Legon was officially opened as the University College of the Gold Coast in 1948. Right. So this is still yes. shortly after the Second World War. Precisely. Precisely. So that's the story. Interesting. So I'm, I'm very interested in this uh, coming of the Eastern Europeans because of course, post Second World War, there were two main emerging superpowers in the world. Yes. And that eventually led us to the Cold War. And the Russians, or the, then USSR, right? And then you had the, the US 
the Brits at that time were now trying to rebuild their own country as were France and the rest. So I find it very interesting that we were seeing Eastern Europeans coming to Ghana post the Second World War. Well, because Nkrumah had more or less uh, declared himself in the socialist camp, he had spent years fighting the he has spent years fighting the colonialists and had finally decided that they blocked him. He made too many enemies among the French by supporting French terrorists. He made too many enemies among the British. And he was even putting his nose into the Vietnam War. He was to be life silenced. But the Socialists egged him on and assured him they would protect him. So he was open to them. And I'm happy that he did because he made a huge difference in architecture in this country. It allowed us to look inward and develop. Look inward, but it allowed us to look away from Western Europe. It allowed us to look at Other fresh ideas coming from Eastern Europe, which was very much to our advantage, yes. I, and that's interesting also, because it means that, so you spoke about the louver blades, you know, the glass, the straight lines, all those things are an inheritance, presently, of that era. Yes, very much so. Okay, so Uncle Nat, let's talk about Mamprobi. You mentioned it briefly, and you said that um, what, much of what we see in Mamprobi now is also because of that earthquake that happened in 1939 and what happened post that period. As Mamprobi as we see it, how did it come about? Uh, the earthquake had a huge impact on British Accra, Jamestown. The government wanted to move the population across the other side of the Kole was relatively empty. Because the guns were not The moving guns were not they moving weren't doing there. Anything there. The government had to try and convince the guns to move. The Mleshi Manche at that time was only too willing to lead his people across. So he did. It was also give the government a chance to do some mass housing. And they did, and they based it upon African concepts of family homestead. So you have the family home in the middle, then you have the kitchen sitting outside, you have the toilets, on the other side. And the whole idea being that as the family grew, they would fill in the space between them. Some did and some didn't. And it's interesting when you go around to see those who filled in and those who didn't. But that was the original idea. And that was one of the first places that it actually took place. And I mean, Mamprobi has become very important, not just for Ghana families that ended up living there, but for medical students at Kolebu, for example, a lot of them occupy those houses, they rent them as accommodation. You know, and it, it's become an interesting part of even our educational system from that angle. Well, Uncle Nat, while we're at Mamprobi, now let's move a little and talk about Kolegono and then Choko. These two places, architecturally speaking, what's the history? Uh, Kolegono isn't terribly different from Mamprobi because it was also something under the domination of the Mlishi Manche. There was long case between the people of Astre, who claimed the land was theirs, and the people of Jamestown, who claimed that it was theirs in the course of which they adduced evidence that 
The first person to build a house there was a slave owned by a gentleman from Jamestown. Okay, but eventually they won. Uh, Choco was one of the original Ga villages. And in all the travel bulletin, travel route, Choco is mentioned. But it's so far outside the center of the city that it got lost in the mix. It's in from Makola to London Market, Adabaka Market. There's some kind of similarity that runs through. But that architecture of our markets, you know, Kaneshi markets, where do they come from? Originally, a market was an open space not far from the king's palace that was used as communal space. So a space that could be used to sell things. It also could be parade ground for devas for what have you. So it's more or less a community center. Community center. Okay. That's what it used to be. Original. Now, as Accra became more sophisticated or more complicated, uh, spaces became less general and more particular. And it fitted in with the city's own trajectory to label this space as a football field to label the space as the school field, to label the space, etc., etc. Markets also came under that restriction because you needed to keep them clean. Somebody has to pay for the markets. Somebody has to pay for maintaining the markets. That's when the governments got involved in the markets. Once government got involved, you needed to put some kind of design on it because you're paying out of the public purse. So they started imprinting their personality on it. Okay. So that's how this market started. And it has been so ever since. It is getting a little difficult now because what is a market? Is Accra Mall a market? Oh, it is. I mean, buying and selling happens there. Well, the basic sense. That's the point I'm trying to make, that we are living at a time of incredible flux, where many of the ways we define the city are changing right under our noses and we need a different consensus on what defines a city in our time in order to move forward the architects and engineers are trying to adapt to modern expectations if you look at the market at uh, the new market that Makola, the vertical one, not the great one. That's a whole new concept of a market space. Uh, we are used to market women being fat. Now, whether they can climb up five or six stairs laden with goods is another thing. So, the whole idea of a market structure is changing. Markets have always been social centers. When we were doing Makola markets, we discovered that people went there not only to shop, but also for the latest gossip. And it was very important to them that they had access to this gossip. So, it's all part of now the architect's brief what a market should be. So I'm going to ask, do you have any final words when it comes to 
this concept of Ablekuma, Abakumawo, as far as uh, architecture in Accra, the architecture and beyond is concerned. You, can, you cannot stop it. Every day, new ideas come up. The architecture today is different than it was 10, 15 years ago. COVID that we are all suffering now is going to make a huge difference in building styles in architecture. You can no longer design an office of today the way you designed an office yesterday. You can no longer just keep people on top of one another. You have to be conscious of the health implications. We are yet to see, but so far as I'm concerned, we've crossed a red line and we are going to see what the result would be. Thank you so much, Uncle Nat. So ladies and gentlemen, once again, you've been listening and watching the Heritage On Air series on 97.3 City FM and City TV. And I've been speaking to Uncle Nat, otherwise known as Nat Nuno Amate Fio. He's, I told you, an architect extraordinaire, seasoned architect. Um, he, uh, clearly, he knows the history of architecture in Accra and of Ghana. And of course, he's a former mayor of Accra as well. And we've been speaking again about architecture in Accra within the context and the concept of Ablekuma Abakumawo. People, strangers, should come and live amongst us, help us. And we've seen that, of course, there have been many influences that strangers have brought to our architecture. And they've definitely left their footprint here. And as Uncle Nat said, the stranger COVID has also come. And in the years to come, we'll see how that will affect our architecture as well. My name is Apioko and we've been broadcasting from the Dear Gratis Studios right here in Jamestown in Accra, oldest photo studio in Accra in Ghana, erected in 1922 and full of history and architectural housing of heritage in itself. <laughs>